Hey folks, it's C.J. Miller. I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana, across the Red River from beautiful Bossier City, Louisiana. And this uh, is Billy Zane. Uh, as he appears in 1996 as The Phantom. This is my first time watching it. Uh, I knew it was out there. I just never got around to watching it. And I was like, I will someday. It's a good movie so far. It has, you know, I mean, as I, I, it's, it's, yeah, it was in, this is kind of like, they had the opening scene and he was in costume and he showed up doing his phantom swashbuckling uh, kind of thing. I'll get into that in a second. And then they get into a little backstory that, that this is a 400 year old legend that he's kind of stepped into and we don't know why. And so throughout the course of the movie, I hope to figure it out. But anyway, it's some sort of a African Indian kind of thing. And uh, he's there and uh, to, you know, he's looking for some skull kind of thing. So it's a, it's a basically, uh, it's going to be an ar archeological action flick uh, along the lines of uh, maybe, Indiana Jones, but if you blend in a little bit of uh, uh, Green Hornet with it, maybe some some Batman, uh, you know. But really, kind of Green Hornet with it. That that's kind of what we're getting here. Maybe a little bit of a, uh, you know, in the eighties there was a Sheena Queen of the Jungle uh, movie, uh, star starring Tanya Roberts, uh, that was based off a comic book uh, character or something. Also. So uh, it's, it's it's that you know it's 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 that vibe, and uh, you know uh, I like it. But I will say that in my twenties, uh, which was in the nineties, uh, I had a, a major like dude crush on Billy Zane, you know, because um, I would see I would see things and this guy would show up in these in. in smaller roles and then eventually you know started being you know central to the action and then eventually uh you know you know it was like a big part of the the lead ensemble or whatever like that you know like in tombstone who's like a smaller part but you knew he was there and uh then of course uh he blew me away with um uh tales of the crypt uh, Demon Knight, the, the first Tales of the Crypt movie, and uh, and then uh, he did the uh, Marilyn Manson music video, The Dope Show, in which was like the first male on male kiss in a mainstream kind of forum. Because uh, anything like that would always happen on, uh, yeah, it would be satirical, it would be a joke, it would be a gag, it would be uh, a quick peck. You know, something like that. It, it wouldn't be like a, a full-on make-out like what happened in that music video, uh, which was not necessarily erotic. It was just like people in pink riot gear walking down the street. And then, like, in the course of it, it's like they, they turned and they had sort of a make-out. And I will say when they zoomed in on his face in that video, he did look like he could barely keep a straight face. So it was just, you know, whatever. Uh, just going along, being a part of the music video. But, yeah, no... Um, that was an important that that music video, and then the George Michael video for Outside. Uh, they were important videos for um, not so much uh, gay characters or gay people or anything like that, but just kind of a representation along the lines of uh, you know there are gay people. It's not that big of a deal. Of course, I don't think that. Uh, uh, oh, I don't think I think he's actually been married and stuff. I think he's actually he's not. There's no indication. He always plays straight guys. I don't think he's gay, but just uh, whatever. Um, it was cool. So um, I, I'm not going to try to make any sort of points off of it. I'm just saying that that image that you know they were the first like they were like okay you yeah, whatever we'll just uh, you know we don't we don't mind sharing this is not that big of a deal. It's no different than like, uh, you know, characters who are male and female, uh, kissing on screen. You don't freak out when you see that. So why would you freak out when you, you know what I mean? It was, you know, uh, besides Marilyn Manson, you know, like by that, by that time, you know, whatever. But anyway, uh, yeah, this was, a, this was, a, this was, 
so far in the opening of this movie, I would say that I like it. Um, I'm about to have uh, some pork chops. Hang on, I'll bring a plate over. Aha, so here we go. And just so you know, this is a pork chop that I have uh, used a seasoned corn flour with and then lightly, I, I, it, what you would call a penne, a, a pan fry, where I took uh, some butter. I blended the butter with a little bit of uh, canola oil. And it was like, uh, you know, just whole butter. And uh, I, I did like a stick and then I, a little bit, maybe like, maybe two tablespoons of canola oil, got it in the bottom of the pan, and then I uh, took the uh, pork chops that I had shaken. So it's basically a shaken uh, skillet fry or whatever. I, mean, I could have, uh, you know, it's, it's not perfect, but it's better than deep fry. Okay, so there's about, um, probably about 10 grams, eight to 10 grams, depending upon the size of the pork chop. Uh, worth of carbs due to the breading. Otherwise, there would be no carbs. Uh, so that's the main thing for this, is we want to want to stay under 50 grams of carbs. And my carb count starts over at midnight, and so this is a fresh... So I could do five of these pork chops throughout the day. That's a lot of pork chops in one day. I don't think I'm going to eat five pork chops. Uh, but I... I uh, definitely we'll have one or two and then kind of like space it through some other things, you know, some other, you know, I just want to like, remember not to exceed the 50 grams of carbs in any uh, period for probably until now, until like Saturday or Sunday, give it about that amount of time, you know, and uh, stay physical. And uh, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Keto. And then, so I love you guys. Uh, bon appetit for me. Uh, I gotta wake up a little bit earlier than what I would want to. And uh, so I'll have this. I'll finish off this movie. Probably about another hour and 20 minutes. And then I'll go to bed, set an alarm, wake up. And I went, when I know they're going to do inspection, I want to do like a, you know, I want to freshly mop the floor uh, before they come in. You know, and if I had mopped it today... Uh, like, cause I mop the floor about every two, sometimes, sometimes I'll get, you know, slouchy and it'll be three days, but, but I mean, I'm talking about just really, really getting in there. If I do this, uh, like, uh, uh, sh you know, now, then I'm going to end up having to do it again before they come do the inspection. Cause I would, I would have walked all over it anyway. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Let me give this a taste, which I've already tasted it, but I'll do it for you. Hang on. All right, so check this out. Very tender and listen. Very crispy. Very delicious. What's not that? What's not to like? It's a pork chop. Um, in a seasoned corn flour. I don't know what they seasoned it with. It was a package, but. I would say, if you wanted to, you could get uh, corn flour, not corn meal, but corn flour, really fine corn flour, and then probably put maybe some Old Bay in it, uh, twist in a little... Uh, um, powdered sassafras or something like that get that little get that little twist or twang to it or something or at least at least some powdered lemongrass lemongrass or something this is it's it's very this is very good this is very right there with it there's a slight uh twist i would say that lets me know that there's uh yeah that's cool um doesn't surprise me um, probably hmm, Old Bay kind of essence. If you took like an, some Old Bay seasoning and then you used, uh, I'm, I'm be, being redundant. I'm sorry. I need to work on that, but I'm just thinking my, thinking my things through. I don't really script my videos or anything. 
Yeah, I would say if you wanted this, and I'm going by just basically not a recipe, but just if you want the qualities that this, this has, which is a really nice uh, crunch, a typical crunch. Mm. Just maybe even a little bit of a mustard seasoning. I will tell you, if you if you want to do it, get the get the corn flour, uh, and then uh, you know mustard powder. Uh, and I'm not even a big mustard person. Uh, Old Bay seasoning. Um, definitely go in there with uh, uh, some sassafras, which is uh, powdered gumbo fillet seasoning. But it's 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 whatever. Um, they also you use the, the uh, parts of that plant to make licorice and uh, tea and and things like that. So uh, um, it's it's a very versatile uh, plant. Um, yeah, no, but it's good. You would you would you would enjoy this. Um, or if you wanna if you wanna skip it, then then get um, a, maybe a chicken fry or fish fry or anything like that. Whatever you have that. Uh, that is a uh, um, um, corn flour based and uh, run with it. Okay, bon appetit, love and light, peace, good night, bye.